Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, I have put together some of my favorite DIYs that you can create using everyday mason style jars in different sizes. Now these jars are available year round and there are so many ways that you could customize and decorate them. Now this video is the perfect one stop shop to inspire you to make some really great projects and the links to the original videos are in the description box below. Now as always, I did include the supply list for each project so you can use it for reference as you gather your your supplies now before we start I have to say hey hey to all of my subscribers and if you're a new visitor to my channel today I hope you consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy these crafts and see all of the ways that you could customize these for your space so now let's jump right into the projects the mason style jars that I got from Walmart and we'll also be using this Sun hat from the Dollar Tree Now we are going to start with destructing this sun hat. So go ahead and remove any tags and ribbons from the sun hat, including tags on the inside. Now in order to take this apart, we want to find the very end, which is pretty easy. And we're only going to snip just a few of those threads. And then you notice it just easily comes apart. Now we're going to be using this trim to decorate our mason jar for this project. Now I've done a few in advance and I wrapped it around this spool. So go ahead and take your mason jars and remove those lids. Now we're going to start with one and what we're going to do is we are going to be applying this trim around our jar. Now we are going to start at the very, very bottom. Just start with a dot of hot glue near the bottom that's even with the bottom edge. And then once that place is um, started, go ahead and add hot glue along that bottom edge of the jar and wrap your ribbon around. Now you want to be very um, careful with this. You want to make sure it's nice and even because this will determine the placement of the remainder of your rows. Now once you're once you're um, meeting up at the under end, you want to cut your ribbon at least a quarter of an inch longer to overlap the previous section and then place it into place. Now this will start your seam on the back. Now for the next row, we are going to do the same thing. We're going to apply a dot of hot glue to hold that trim right in place. Now for this round, what we're going to do is we are going to overlap the previous round by about an eighth of an inch. And we're going to do this for every round after this. Now you just want to continue wrapping this around your jar. Now we're going to keep wrapping around until we have about eight rounds. Now I decided to stop at eight rounds for my jar, but you can go all the way up if you like. Now we're gonna repeat this for the second jar as well until we have two wrapped jars. Now I love this little peekaboo section at the top. Now for the rings of the jar, we are just going to be paint, uh, spray painting them with some flat black spray paint by Krylon. Now once that does dry, we are going to be adding another piece of that hat trim for the hanger for these jars. Now again, I am just going to apply a dab of hot glue along the threads of the jar and place the ends of the straps right on those threads. Now once that's secure into place, just slip your ring right over there. You want to screw it on and once you screw that on, it locks that strap into place. Now we're going to repeat this for our other jar and now we can test these out on our wall hangers. And there they are, perfect fit. So now I've decorated my jars with some of these pearl drop succulents. Now I think that they look amazing. Now this particular look is giving me all those boho vibes and I love how the sun hat trim looks in these pieces. Now you can certainly add any succulent or plant that you like, just make it your own to match your own home decor and your personal space. the inspiration photo from the website for this project. Now I thought that the mums were absolutely beautiful in this setting and this tray would be super easy to make so I sorted through my Dollar Tree and scrap wood stash for items to recreate this look. 
Now for this project, we'll need three of these canning jars from the Dollar Tree. We need three bunches of mums from the Dollar Tree. You'll also need a piece of scrap wood or you can use this tray that is from the Dollar Tree. And we'll also be using some jute twine. Now the first thing we're going to do is work on the tray. Now you have the option of using this Dollar Tree tray for this project and all you would need to do is paint the tray and the under edge with this dark brown foundation and then follow up with some Waverly wax to create a nice textured wood look. Now I'm going to be going ahead and using wood and I'll be staining with my favorite stain Jacobian by Min Wax. Now I'm gathering up my paint, my staining supplies and then I'm going to apply that stain to the top and the sides of the wood. Now if you prefer not to stain you certainly can just use the antique wax or diluted brown paint to achieve the look. Now once the piece is all stained you want to sit it to the side to dry. Now while that dries we can start working on our canning jars. Now we want to start by removing all of the lids and we're going to be painting these jars with one nice coat of this white chalk paint. Now you can use acrylic paint or spray paint, but you wanna use two coats if you choose to do so. So when you start applying the chalk paint, you wanna make sure that your paint strokes are continuous and in one direction. Then complete that process all around the jars, and then you want to make sure you do the remaining jars the same way. Now when these are completely dry, we're gonna apply one coat of this Mod Podge to protect the finish. Now we're gonna apply this to the jars the same way as we did the paint and we wanna make sure these completely dry before we handle them. Now don't forget to Mod Podge the bottom and the top edge of the rim. So now that our wood is dry, we can apply some handles. So I chose to use some of this irrigation tubing I had left over from our previous project that I'll be using, and here's what it looks like. Now you could substitute some wire from a Dollar Tree wreath form. Go ahead and wrap that with jute twine and paint it black and it'll look just the same. So I'm just gonna take my tubing and I'm trying to decide the placement of the length of the handle and I'm just estimating how high I want it and it was about four inches high. So what I did is I took that estimate, resized it, made sure it was just to my liking, and then I cut the other piece the same length. Now to place the handles on the tray, I'm just gonna run a bead of hot glue at the two ends and um, about a half an inch from the edge. Place it into place, hold it until it dries. Now once that dries, we're gonna permanently adhere these with some of these three quarter inch um, wire nails. You just want to press them into that tubing and that should hold them in place while you hammer and nail them in. Now I'm going to be placing two nails in each of the handles and these will make your handles sturdy enough where you can carry the tray by the handles without worrying about it breaking. And then to cover those nail heads I'm just going to cover them with a black sharpie. So now we can work on decorating our jars. So I'm going to start by cutting six long strands of jute twine and this will be used to tie around the jars. Now we're going to grab a jar and take two strands of that jute twine, twine and then I'm going to tie them around the threads of the jar into a bow. And then I'm gonna trim those tails down a bit and you could just repeat this for the other jars. Now I had a little incident with my scissors but everything is okay, I promise you. Just please be careful when using sharp scissors. Now I did finish tying bows on all my jars before my little medical emergency. So now we can deck out our jars with those beautiful mums from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna estimate how long the stems need to be by holding it against the jar and then I'm gonna fold that stem up to shorten the bunch. Now you can certainly cut them if you like, but I like to keep them intact just in case I wanna use them in another project. And then we're just gonna place them in our jars. And now we just place our jars on our tray and this project is done. So now you can place this arrangement on display and wow, how amazing does this look? 
Now these gorgeous mums that Dollar Tree has this year are awesome quality and it really makes this project look high end. Now I think this would look perfect on a mantle or a vanity or just about anywhere in your home where you need craving of a taste of fall. You guys have to let me know what you think of my version of this project in the comments below. For this project, we'll need two mason style jars. We'll also need four skewers from this package. We'll all need some lemons, we'll need about four. We'll also need two boxwood bundles of greenery or greenery of your choice and we'll also use some yellow ribbon. So we're going to start this project with clean jars and we're going to go ahead and start with removing those lids. Now I will be painting these with this deep cobalt blue acrylic paint. Now I will be applying two coats of this paint, making sure that they're drying thoroughly in between those coats. And here are both coats fully dry. And now I'm going to apply one coat of this matte Mod Podge on top. Now when you apply the Mod Podge, you want to apply it in one continuous stroke. And this will eliminate streaks in your finished project. So now that they're both just about dry, we can start on the embellishments. Now I'm going to start by taking those four skewers and I'm going to be painting them with this green color. And then once they are dry, we can start gathering up our other supplies. So I'm going to grab my lemons, I'm going to grab my greenery, I'm going to grab those jars and the ribbon. Now I'm going to start by cutting two long strips of that ribbon because I'm going to be wrapping this around the jars. So just tie it around the threads of the jar into a bow and then we're just going to trim it up on the ends. There you go, looks good. So once that's done, we could start adding our fillers to the jars. So after we add our greenery, we're gonna work on the lemon. So we're gonna remove that little green end piece on each one of the lemons and insert that skewer right inside there just until it's secure in place. And then once they're on the skewer, I'm just gonna hold it up to the jar and I'm gonna cut those skewers to fit inside at you know your desired length. Now I did also decide to add some of these wild white wildflowers as well and I got these from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to add a few clippings of those to the jar to finish off the look. And then you just repeat this for your other jar. Now after looking at these on display for a while I thought that highlighting that mason jar emblem would give it a unique look. So I'm taking this old sanding sponge that's worn out that I don't use anymore. I'm going to be applying some acrylic white paint directly to it. It's a hard flat surface and it'll work for stamping. So I'm just going to apply some to there and I'm just going to lightly stamp on that paint to that logo just to kind of highlight it and show the little worn look. And I think it looked good. I was a little heavy handed here, but I think the, the logo shows through really well. And now that everything is dry, we can put these on display and I love how they turned out. Now I think these adorable arrangements would look great on a table display or even sitting in a window. 
And just to know that these can be made with Dollar Tree items makes this such a sweet deal. We're gonna need two of these wood planks from the Dollar Tree and two of these mason style jars you can get from the Dollar Tree or Walmart. Okay, we're gonna start off with those mason jars, remove those lids, you wanna make sure your jars are nice and clean and then take them out to give them two coats of this flat black spray paint by Krylon. Now while those are drying, we are gonna work on our planks. Now I wanted to paint my planks and I am gonna be using some white chalk paint for this. Now I'm only gonna be using one nice coat since this is nice and thick and I do wanna paint the top and the sides of each one of those wood planks. And you wanna allow those to completely dry. So here they are, nice and dry, and I am gonna use my black acrylic paint to give it the same type of distressing I did with my crates. Again, taking my little craft stick hack, I wanna dip it into the paint on the flat side and then drag it along the edges. I just absolutely love this technique. It turns out perfect every time. I mean, you really can't mess this up. Now once you go around all of those edges, this is what it looks like. Go ahead and repeat it for your second plank. And here they are. Now with the leftover paint on that craft stick, I'm lightly dragging it on the surface of the plank to pick up some of those ridges in the natural texture. And it also gives a nice rustic display on the top of the plank as well. Now once that's done, you wanna let those completely dry. Now here they are, nice and dry. Now I'm gonna add these hooks. Now I got these hooks from Amazon. I'll link these in the description box below, but you can also use these utility hooks from Dollar Tree or even the peel and stick version from the Dollar Tree as well to accommodate this project. Okay, these do have little drill holes in them and I'm gonna be using some three quarter inch wood screws that are number six for this project. They came with little screws, but I happened to misplace them, but the three quarter inch screws that are number six will fit perfectly for this project. So we wanna go ahead and, and center our hooks about an inch and a half from the top. And I'm only adding a little hot glue to the back just to keep them standing upright while I secure them in place with the screws. Now, please note that hot glue will not hold these very well you definitely want to screw these in. So these are easy just to hand screw in. The wood is very soft and these screws are nice and sharp so you only need a screwdriver to get these into place. And here is one with the screws in place and just repeat this for your second one. Now that the screws are in we are going to blend those in and I'm just going to dab some black acrylic paint on the top of each one of those exposed screw heads to blend it in. and then allow those to completely dry. Now, once they dry, go ahead and flip those over and we are again, we are gonna add these D-ring style hanging hooks on the back. Now you could definitely use the jute twine and staples with this, but I wanted to use these D-rings since I had them on hand and I'll have a link to those in the description box below if you are interested in those as well. So again, I'm using the hot glue to secure them in place until I can get that one screw in there and these again can be hand screwed in without a problem. So now the rings are hooked to both of the signs and they're good to go. So now that those are done, we are gonna work on our mason jars and I love how this flat black spray paint turned out on these, it turned out perfect. So I'm gonna grab a piece of ribbon, it's about 32 inches long and what I wanna do is I wanna tie one single knot on the end. You wanna make sure that this is nice and tight and then trim off the excess. Now to make a hanger out of this ribbon, I'm first going to wrap the ribbon around with the tail part at the end. You wanna cross it around and then you wanna wrap it around the back. Now once it reaches the back again, you wanna twist that ribbon around itself and then bring it back to the front. Now once it's at the front, what you wanna do is loosen up the two rounds that you made around the front of the jar and you wanna feed that, that one loop around twice you wanna pull it really tight and snug and then pull it straight up to make a handle and it should lock itself into place till it makes a nice little hanging handle as shown here. And now all you have to do is repeat this for your second one. Now here are our two mason jars. We just hook those babies on and now we can decorate with them. 
and oh my goodness, okay, I absolutely love how these turned out. Now I added some greenery from the Dollar Tree, but these will look great with some flowers too. Right? Now these little hooks are perfect for this project and the black mason jars, they really turned out awesome. Now I can't wait to use these wood planks and stain them for different projects for my space. I'm going to use two of these mason style jars that I picked up from Walmart. We'll need two packs of these fairy lights, and I got these from Dollar Tree. And we'll need one two-pack of these wood finials that I picked up from Lowe's. So we're going to remove the lids from both of our mason jars, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put three or four coats of this frosted glass spray paint by Rust-Oleum on the jars. Then we're going to take our lids and inserts and spray paint them with flat black spray paint by Krylon. Now while those dry, we're going to work on our wood finials and remove those from the package. And you notice they do have screws on the bottom. Now if you want to remove them, you can remove them with some pliers, but I'm going to keep mine in place for this project. So I'm going to be painting them with some black acrylic paint. Now I'm just going to apply one nice coat over the entire wood finial, um, all of the exposed areas. When I sit them out to dry, this is what they look like when they are all dry. And here are my mason jars after those coats have dried and you can see the difference between that and the clear jar. It turned out perfect. And our inserts and lids and our finials are all dry as well. So what we're going to do is take the finial and use that pointed screw in and we're going to mark the center of our lids for our mason jars. Now this is just going to identify the very center so we can drill a hole in the middle. I'm just going to take my drill and I am going to drill where I marked it and then take one of the finials and just screw it into the lid. And then we're going to repeat that for the other lid as well until we have two pieces that look like this. And now just put the ring of the mason jars right over the top. Now we're going to work on our jars and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of those fairy lights that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to I'll go ahead and put some batteries in the pack. Now I'm placing it in the jar at first just to see if it shows through and it actually doesn't. It's that frosted color really worked well. So then I'm going to turn them on and place them inside the jar and wow, look at that glow. Now to hang these, I am going to use some of this wire that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm just going to cut two pieces of the wire and I am going to form a hanger on the threads of the jar just like I did before. Now I am going to hot glue it in place just to hold it right on the place that I placed it. And this is what it will look like and now we can just insert our piece um, right over the top. So we're going to insert our lid and our ring right over the wire, twist it into place and it locks that wire right on there so these are hanging. And now just repeat this for your other jar and now you can test out the hanging out with your wall piece. And here is what they will look like. So now here they are on display and I'm really loving this look with these mason jar lights. Now I also think that these finials give these a sophisticated look like something you would see in a high end store. Now another great idea would be to use a remote control light set and the fairy lights on Amazon are really inexpensive with a remote. Now how would you choose to display these in your home? Let me know in the comments below. Now I really hope that you're enjoying these crafts so far and I wanted to pop in and let you know that you can follow me on all of these platforms shown here as She's So Crafty. Now I have also provided the links to these in the description box below. So now let's get back to those DIY projects. We'll be using four mason style jars with the wide mouth. You can get these about anywhere for less than a dollar a piece in a 12 pack. We're gonna go ahead and remove the lids and place them to the side. Now go ahead and lay down a piece of protective paper and gather up your painting supplies. Now I will be using this white chalk paint for the jars.
Now we just want to take our brush and apply one generous coat of the paint to the entire outside of the jar. Since I was going for a lightly worn look, then a second coat won't be needed for this. Now while those dry, I will go ahead and prepare the ribbon. Now I have four strips of this black and white check fabric cut from scraps that I already had on hand, but you could use ribbon. And I'll also be using this burlap fabric ribbon that I got on a 70% clearance. Now what I'm doing here is going ahead and measuring and cutting about, cutting about 13 inch long strips. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our checkered strips and glue them down the center of the burlap strip. And here are all four strips ready to go. Now by this time your jars should be dry. So now what we're going to do is prepare the paint worn look on these jars. So I'll be using acrylic paints in the color pavement and, and also a white colored acrylic paint. Now I'll be using the sponge brush to apply these paints. I'm just going to blend the colors together and dab off the excess paint. So you have a mostly dry brush and then kind of wisp the brush across your jars in a random pattern. So now that all four of these are done, we can go ahead and add our ribbon. What we want to do is just wrap the ribbon around the center and glue down one end. Now I fold it in the other end about a half an inch and then I'm just going to go ahead and align it and glue it in place matching it up to the others. And here are all four jars with the ribbon. So now I'll be applying the word love using these poster stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree. All we want to do is just peel and stick the letters onto the burlap ribbon. Now if you want these on there, on there permanently, go ahead and apply a bit of hot glue to the back of the sticker if you like. Now we're going to add some jute twine from the Dollar Tree to the top of the jars. We're just going to wrap those around the thread several times and then we're going to secure it in place with a dab of hot glue. Then we're just going to cut another generous piece of twine and we're going to tie a bow around the top. And here they are. All that's left to do is add some rose bunches and hearts. And here is our completed project, you guys. This project is so quick and easy to do, and it turns out so beautiful. Those red roses perfectly add that final touch to this love theme. I also decided to add these cute little glitter hearts from the Dollar Tree, and they really radiate that Valentine's ambiance that I was going for. Now I chose these red roses, but you can add white, pink, blush, or any kind of flower or color that you love. There are so many options on the wording too. You can have this say home, calm, or customize it to your liking. The letters are easy to switch out to make it your own. If you like that home sign on the wall as well, please see a link in the description box for a tutorial on that project.
And check this out. Turn those babies around and add some of those chalkboard tags from the Dollar Tree and you can make customized multi-purpose jars. I placed my crafting tools in mine and labeled them with a chalk marker. I just love projects that can be used for multi-purposes. Don't you? two of these mason style jars and I picked these up from Walmart. We'll also need one pack of beads and I got these from Dollar Tree. So we're going to take one of our jars and we are going to be placing beads on the outside of these jars in a diagonal X uh, type of pattern. So go ahead and take the beads and what we're going to do is in order to have a continuous strand just go ahead and cut the beads and we'll have one total long piece. Now, in order to get our diagonal perfectly straight, I'm gonna use some painter's tape to do this to help with my guide. And I just took some, uh, cut it in half, and then I ran it across the jar in a diagonal. Now, I'm gonna run some hot glue along the edge of that, uh, pa that painter's tape and place my beads right along the edge so it's nice and straight. Now, I'm just gonna trim it down to fit, remove that painter's tape, and then I'm gonna make an X pattern right over those beads. So I'm gonna take that same painter's tape and go over it in an X. Then again, just go ahead and run some hot glue along the edge of that painter's tape on the actual jar, and then place another row of those beads in place. Now, once those are in place, remove that painter's tape and trim those beads down. Now go ahead and repeat this all the way around the jar, making X's on all four sides of your jar. Now once that's done, go ahead and trim off any excess beads around the ends. So now all four sides of our jar are completed. Now we're just gonna repeat this for our second jar. And here are both of our jars with our beaded trim. And I'm gonna go around with it with some rubbing alcohol and clean off all of the glass and remove all of those hot glue webs. And then I'm gonna go over it with a couple of coats of this flat white spray paint by Krylon. So after those coats dry, here is what our jars will look like. Now, in order to hang these, um, I'm gonna be using some string. Now, I did also paint the lids of those mason jars as well. Now this twine is from the Dollar Tree and it is fairly strong. So what I'm gonna do is loop it at the top to form a hanging string and then cut it to size. Now to hold these in place, I'm just gonna hot glue each end on the threaded portion of the jar just to hold it until I can get that ring wrapped around the top. So I'm just gonna place that over the neck of the jar, over the string, and once I screw that into place, it locks that string in place. Now that hot glue is only to temporarily hold it until you get that ring around the neck of the jar. Now we're gonna repeat this for your other jar and then test to see how it hangs on your board and it looks perfect. So now I've added some lavender bunches and here are the jars displayed on our hangers. Now I just love how these turned out with the beads and they really do look amazing. And the lavender adds that perfect pop of spring color that pulls it all together. Now you all have to let me know in the comments what you think about these beaded jars. a one by four by eight piece of wood and it was a dollar 98 from the Home Depot and we'll use half of it. Now this is just the end piece for reference with the barcode. We'll also need two 16 ounce canning jars or similar jars or vases. Now the first thing we're going to do is to cut the wood for our sconces and we'll be cutting two pieces 15 inches long and two pieces four and a half inches long. Now we'll be staining the wood, but before we do so, we wanna mark a border at that 10 inch mark on each piece. And then I'm gonna take a piece of painter's tape and I'm gonna apply it right under that 10 inch mark. And now we can gather up our supplies and prepare to stain. And of course, I'll be using my Jacobian stain by Mimwax for these projects.
So we're gonna start applying that stain to the larger 10 inch area above that tape line on those long pieces. We wanna make sure we get the sides and the top of that piece as well. And once both of those longer pieces are stained, we're gonna stain all the sides of the smaller pieces front and back. Now once that stain does dry, we can go ahead and remove the tape. So now we're gonna tape off the other end because we're gonna be painting it. So we're just gonna apply the, uh, the tape to the edge of the stained area right above it. And now we can paint the bottom portion of this with white acrylic paint. Now I wanna start by applying a light coat along the tape edge first. And then I'm gonna cover the remainder of the ends of both of the sconces. And just let these dry. So now that they are dry, we can remove that painter's tape. So now we're gonna measure for the placement of that support shelf and we're gonna be marking it at nine inches and that's where the top of the shelf will be mounted. And then we're gonna transfer that marking right around that curve to the back of the board. Now to secure the shelves to the board, we're gonna be using two of these one and three quarter wood screws for each piece. So we're gonna be drilling two pilot holes for their placement with a 3 32nd inch drill bit. And then we're gonna to start to hand screw um, those screws in the back of each piece until about a quarter of it pokes through the other end. And what we're gonna do is take that shelf piece and we wanna place it on top of those screws that are poking out, press it down, and it'll transfer the marks where you need to drill pilot holes on this piece. And then I'm just gonna drill pilot holes into our four and a half inch piece, and, and then I'm going to screw it all into place. And here are both sconces assembled. So now we're going to mark and we're gonna drill holes for our security straps. Now, I will be drilling two holes for two options. One to wrap around the center of the jar at six and a half inches from the top and the other to wrap around the jar lip at five and a half inches from the top. Now I've highlighted the marks here so you can see where we'll be drilling. Now I recommend using a 5 32nd inch or larger drill bit for these holes. Now I will be using some black ribbon to strap these in, but you could use the classic ring clap if you have that on hand. I didn't have any ring clap, so I'm gonna be using this black ribbon. So you wanna cut a piece of ribbon long enough to secure around the jar with some left in the back for tying, to, tying it in place. Now to feed the ribbon through the holes, I'm going to heat the ends of the ribbon and kind of fuse them together with a lighter. And then I'm just gonna take one of these loose skewers that I had and I wanna start to feed in that ribbon starting with the corner of the ribbon through that drill hole and I'm just gonna push it through to the other end. Once you see it poking through, you can just grab some needle nose pliers and pull it through. And then now that you have your loop, you can insert your jar into that loop and then pull it in the back to tighten and tie it into place. Now here are both jars all strapped in. Now to hang these, I'll be using these picture hanging hooks that I had from a kit purchased from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna flip those sconces over and I wanna place one of those hangers about an inch from the top of each sconce. Now the nails for these are small as well, so we also wanna use our needle nose pliers to hold those nails while hammering those hangers into place.
And here are both of the hooks in place. So now all we have to do is add some greenery or florals of your choice. Now I'm going to use this lamb ear and these pumpkins on a stick from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to arrange that lamb's ear in the jars first and then I'm going to take those pumpkins and add them in as well. Now some of them are fairly long so I'm just going to clip them down and adjust them to fit them in the jar. And then you can hang up your pieces. And here are those beautiful sconces hung up on display. Now I'm really loving the combination of the wood and the white, giving this piece a high-end modern look. And I really love using lamb ear in combination with the ivory pumpkins for a fall theme giving it a nice soft look and these are great for year round and will look perfect in any season's decor. We'll need two of mason jars. We'll need two of some solid carved hearts and we'll need some of wildflowers of your choice and some of that farmhouse ribbon. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the lids of our mason jars and we are going to be painting these. So I'm going to be using some of my chalk paint and I'm going to be adding this um, with a paint brush. So all you want to do is you want to add your, uh, your chalk paint to this. You want to make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies first and then you want to go in one solid stroke from the top to the bottom to eliminate any streaks in your jars. And then you want to repeat this for your other jar. So now that all both jars are covered, you want them to completely dry. Now, once they are dry, we want to protect that finish. So I'm going to use some of this matte Mod Podge that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And you're going to apply this the same way. You just want to go in straight up and down strokes to make sure it's a nice even coat around both of the jars. And then you want to make sure you sit them both to the side to dry. So while those are drying, we are going to be staining the solid hearts from our set. So I'm going to be using that same Jacobian stain by Minwax, and I'm going to stain the front and the back of the solid hearts. Now, once those are dry, we can start to make our heart picks. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to wrap um, the solid hearts with some jute twine. So I'm just going to hot glue it into place. And then you just randomly wrap that jute, twin, jute, jute, twin, <laughs> jute twine all around the heart in any random pattern until you're happy with it. And then snip it off and hot glue it into place. Now once both hearts are covered, this is what they'll look like. So now to add the height to my hearts, I'm just gonna be using some of these 10 inch dowels that I got from the Dollar Tree. And to attach them, I'm gonna attach them to the solid hearts first. And I'm just gonna nestle that dowel right in between those strings and then apply hot glue along the backside to secure them into place. And here's what they'll look like on the dowels. Now for the carved hearts, I'm just going to add a dot of hot glue at the very bottom. I'm going to make sure that that is nice and secure first. And then what I'm going to do is go back and add some hot glue right over the top of that dowel onto the heart. And this kind of adds a little brace so it stays nice and secure to the, to the rod. So now our jars are completely dry and we can start to decorate. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those wildflowers I have and some of that farmhouse ribbon. So I'm going to measure out a piece where I can tie a bow around the threads of my jar. So and then I'm just going to tie it really nice and tight into a really pretty bow. So once both bows are tied, go ahead and grab some of those wildflowers and I'm just going to fold up that bottom stem so it fits in the jars. You can certainly cut it off, but I like to fold it up just in case I want to repurpose these into another project. So once those are in the jar, I'm going to take 
our hearts on a stem and I'm just going to cut them to size and I like I'm going to cut the um, ones with the wrapped twine a little shorter than the ones with the carved hearts because I wanted varying heights for texture and appeal when I add them to the jars. So then I'm just going to nestle those in into those wildflowers and um, make sure that they are showing from the front. Now once both jars are added, I wanted to add another accent to the jars. It just seemed a little plain to me. So I took some of the dark wood grain contact paper from the Dollar Tree and I cut some one and a half strips from it. So what I'm going to end up doing is I want to wrap that strip around the center of each jar. So you just want to carefully measure to the center and make sure it is applied nice and smooth. Just trim off any excess edge, put that ribbon back down there, and there you go. Now I did want my greenery to be a little fuller, so I did add an additional boxwood along with the wildflowers, and I think this added that last final perfect touch where my bundle is nice and full. And here are both bundles complete. Oh my goodness, you guys. Okay, I really love how these turned out. Now I love the textured hearts on these. It really does give it a nice look and appeal and the little strip just give it that touch of modern that we're going for. Now you can choose to use greenery, you could use flowers, you can even change up the ribbon. You could just make it your own. I just think that these are so adorable and they'll fit into your decor year round. Now we're gonna need three mason jars and these are available at the Dollar Tree, but they're a lot cheaper at Walmart by the case. You'll also need one of these signs from the Dollar Tree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start off working with the mason jar. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those lids and the seals and make sure they're nice and clean. Now I'll be painting these with some white chalk paint and I'm gonna put one nice coat on each jar. Now you definitely can use acrylic paint or even spray paint, it's all up to you. I just like the chalk paint. I'm gonna put one nice coat, it's nice, nice and thick and I wanted it to have a rustic look so only one coat will work for my project. So you wanna make sure all three jars are nice and painted and let them sit to dry. Now, once they are dry, we are going to seal them with a coat of Mod Podge. Now, I do have satin finish here, but you can use any finish that you like. Now, once you paint that on, you want to sit those to the side to completely dry as well. So while those dry, we're going to work on our sign, which will be turned into a tray. So go ahead and remove that insert of the sign. And then we're going to take some pliers and remove all of the little pegs that hold that sign on the inside. And now we can paint our pieces. So I'm gonna be using some black acrylic paint to go over all of the pieces. So I'm gonna start with the back of that sign, go ahead and apply a nice good layer of that black acrylic paint, making sure that you go in even strokes all the way around. And then you also wanna paint the frame. Now I noticed my frame had kind of a shiny texture after I started painting it, but I found that adding two coats resolved that. And you can also sand it before painting if you like. Now you just wanna make sure they're both painted and let them sit to completely dry and they'll have this beautiful finish. Now again, we do wanna seal this with the Mod Podge to prevent any chipping on our project and just apply a nice even coat on both pieces. And once they're dry, they have this nice even finished look. So now we can insert that bottom into our tray. Now to permanently add this, we're just going to apply a layer of that hot glue on that inside ledge of our frame. And then we are going to take our sign and place it right inside and press it firmly into place. Now I think I could probably repurpose this This Is Us piece, so I went ahead and removed that from the back. And to make it nice and clean, I'm going to add some hot glue to the back and insert a piece of extra craft paper right on top to make it look neat. Now I did overlap some paint on the back, so I'm gonna go over that lightly with sandpaper and that will create a nice clean look as well. 
So now our mason jars should be nice and dry and I have this farmhouse ribbon on hand so I'm going to take some of this farmhouse buffalo check ribbon and I'm going to tie a bow around each one of my jars. Now you can add anything you like. You can add any kind of ribbon that you like or you can add designs actually on the jar. You can cut them out with Cricut or print them out. It's all up to you. I just wanted to keep this nice and simple so I would be able to repurpose these jars and change them up with the seasons. So all I did was type a really simple simple cute bow on each one of my jars. So now all you have to do is add greenery of your choice and I am adding some of this boxwood from Walmart. I think it's absolutely beautiful and fits perfectly into this design. And then add three of your mason jars right on the tray and they fit perfectly. And here are my sweet little jars on display on the tray and I love how simple and easy these were to make. Now you can add any kind of filler that you like for these and change them up for the holidays. And this little tray is perfect for the fit of displaying these jars too. Now I have to say I love all of these projects today but you guys have to let me know which one of these DIYs today was your favorite. Let me know in the comments below. Listen, I hope that you all enjoyed seeing these creations again or for some of you for the very first time. I hope that you all are inspired to create your own mason jar creations using the different items presented in this video. Now if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE -E on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.